What's up everybody? My name is Ryan Jones and I am the host of the program Ryan with an E. Where we will have candid, honest, hilarious, and sometimes even serious conversations about the topics and happenings that are pertinent to young women and college students like myself. I will be opening up about my experiences as I navigate my way through adulthood with the help of my homegirls, my role models, and of course, God. Thank you so much for tuning in to laugh, learn, and kick it with your girl, Ryan with a knee. Welcome back everyone to Ryan with a knee. I am your host, Ryan Jones, that's R-Y-A-N-E, and I'm so happy that you have tuned in to kick it with your girl. For today's special episode, I have a guest with me. Her name is Casey. She is like a little sister to me. I love this girl to death. Casey, why don't you introduce yourself to the people? Hi, I'm Casey. I'm 14 years old. I attend Western Middle School at the time in eighth grade. And I just got accepted into Central High School. Woo! Get it, girl! So I will be attending that next year for my freshman year. Yes, so for today's episode, we are going to be doing a theme called Questions for My Future Self. And so since Casey's in 8th grade and I am a freshman in college, yes, that's right, um, I had Casey come up with some questions, ask her girlfriends, her friends from school to come up with some questions that they would like to ask someone my age or questions for their future self. But before we jump into the questions, let's get into my favorite segment, which is the Queen's Corner. And for today's episode, Casey is our queen of the day. So Casey, do you have any advice, uh, any pieces of wisdom for girls who may be younger than you watching this episode? Um, any advice for people younger than me? Just stay focused. Don't worry about things on the outside, like friends, relationships come and go. Um, as long as you have that stern friendship that you know will last forever, then I wouldn't worry about that. Just stay focused, start planning your future. And just... Yeah, well thank you Casey as Queen of the Day. So what was your biggest challenge adjusting to high school when you first went as a freshman? Um, I would say the biggest challenge for me was that I was the only kid from my middle school going to my high school, which is a different experience because since I was going to Sacred Heart, which is a private school, and I went to St. Francis, which is a very small middle school, um, a lot of the other kids went to different high schools, so I was the only one going to Sacred Heart. So it felt like kind of isolating because I didn't really know anybody going into um, high school. So that was really scary for me, especially as an eighth grader, thinking I'm not going to make any friends because I don't know anybody. But once I got there, I joined cheerleading, and I was able to make some friends. So. I think a lot of people are worried about making friends going into um, high school, but you'll find your group, I assure you. Yeah, so how exactly did you cope with the friendship and how exactly did you feel comfortable enough to make friends and how did you find them? Yeah, so like I said, I did cheerleading, so luckily for me, um, and you do cheerleading, right, yeah. too, so you kind of know what's going on, but um, for my school, we started the season like I tried out for cheerleading my 8th grade year like in May, so towards the end of 8th grade year I tried out for the team so in the summertime when we had camps, we had practices, we had conditioning, I was already making those friends during the summer so when I got to school I already had somebody to sit with at lunch, I had some people that I knew in my classes and once you meet other people on the cheerleading team or whatever club or sports team you do, then they'll be able to introduce you to some other people. I started following other girls on Instagram just so when I got to school, I would be like, oh, I follow you. I know you. Like, hey, how are you doing? And I think I'm a pretty outgoing person anyway, so I've never really been too shy when it comes to, like, making friends. I'm always someone to talk to, like, in a classroom. I'm always at, talking to somebody next to me. So I think I'm happy that I have that attribute because I wasn't too nervous to make friends in high school. I was able to put myself out there. And I know that that may not be the case for everybody. If you're shy or you're just an introvert, it can seem really intimidating trying to reach out to someone and ask them to hang out or if you want to sit with them at lunch. But I promise you, everybody is in that same situation. Everybody's nervous about making friends. So don't don't be intimidated about it. You'll you'll make your friends. That's good to know because I am an introvert. And so going into the last question, how did you cope with finding friends and 
doing getting relationships and realizing that was the right relationships. Right. So, like I said, I did cheerleading. So, uh, for my school specifically and for our cheerleading team, we tried out for the team like May of that eighth grade year. So, during the summer, I was able to do cheer camp and conditioning. So, all through the summer, I was becoming friends with the girls that were on my cheerleading team, which really helped because once I got to school, I already knew these girls, we sat at lunch together, and from making friends with the girls on the team, they were able to introduce me to other people that they knew that were in our freshman class. So I was following, following girls on Instagram, add them on Snapchat, and that way when I went to class, my first period class, I was like, oh my God, I know you, I know you. And for me, I'm an extrovert. I talk to anybody, I'll talk to a brick wall. <laughs> so it's easy for me to talk to someone next to me or start up a conversation, but I know that's not the case for anybody. If you're an introvert and you're kind of shy, it may be difficult for you to kind of break out of your shell and start up a conversation. But I just want to let you know that everybody is in the same position. Everybody's nervous about making friends on the first day of school or the first week of high school. So don't necessarily be intimidated by trying to start up a conversation because everybody's feeling the same way. That's definitely good to know because I'm a mixture of an extrovert and introvert. So I'll notice that once I get to high yeah, school. Yeah, keep that in mind. <laughs> Next question, do you have any advice for anyone that faces peer pressure during high school? Yes, yeah, so peer pressure is a big thing among adolescents, as everybody knows, whether that be drugs, alcohol, sex, yes. whatever. Um, and it's just something that you face and you see the crowd of people doing one thing and you may not feel comfortable doing that. And the advice that I would have is have friends that you know wouldn't put you in positions like that because I feel like if they're if they're your friends they know your boundaries they know your comfort zone and if they were your true friends they wouldn't put you in a position to make you feel uncomfortable so that would be my advice um, luckily I never really had friends that peer pressured me but I do know that it's definitely popular in high school for sure and I would also say just be smart. That doesn't mean you don't go to parties or you don't hang out with people because it's high school, you want to have fun. Yeah. But just be smart, make conscious decisions. Think if my mom knew I was doing this, would I be getting a little bit and would I get in trouble? Yeah. It wouldn't be worth it. Like the consequences are definitely not worth the trouble that you would be doing. So. Yeah, for sure. What kept you focused? in school although also while having a social life at the same right, time. Right, right. So I was a busy bee. I mean I'm me too are. Are. We exactly. know, yeah. I like to do stuff. I like to stay busy. So in high school of course I had homework so Sega Heart was a very rigorous school like I would have like up to almost three hours of homework a night just from all my different classes. So I would have homework and then my freshman and sophomore year I did cheer so I practiced and then I did ambassadors, and then I started BSU, and then it was just a whole bunch of stuff. But one thing that I always made sure to prioritize was that I'm a teenager, and I'm in high school, and yes, academics are very important to me, but also just having fun is important to me too. So whenever I would hang out with my, I made sure to make have time for hanging out with my friends or um, just doing things that I have fun with. Times. Yeah, so like I love singing in church choir. We sung in TNT yeah. together. So that was something that I prioritized. I knew that I had rehearsal every Tuesday at 7 or whatever time rehearsal was. And that was something that I prioritized during the week. So I would make sure that I would arrange my homework time, study time around that. Just around the things that I knew were fun to me um, and that I found important because it's very, it's imperative that you aren't just focused on the academic part of it. You want to make sure that you're involved and having fun with your friends because this is a time that you won't get back. Um, so yeah, just study hard, work hard, but have fun too. So switching from academics, when would you say is a right time for a relationship in high school? So like, <laughs> is that a juicy question? <laughs> okay, so I would say that my mom was, my mom wasn't a parent that was like, you can't have a boyfriend until yeah. you're 17, 18 or whatever. My mom allowed me to date, she let mm -hmm. me to, she allowed me to have boyfriends, um, all that stuff. She wasn't just willy-nilly, I wasn't Oh, what are you out. saying, just hang out? You already, you already know my <laughs> yeah. mom, so she wasn't doing all that, but she wanted me to be able to practice and, mm. um, experience. Exa exactly, have that experience, so I... I think my first real boyfriend 
was junior year. That was junior year. But I still was like talking to other boys. Around. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I think whenever you're ready, ready. I wouldn't put a specific age on it. Um, these little boys are not waste no time to, uh, worth no time to over <laughs> them. So I still made sure that I was focused on my school, focused on my friends and everything like that. And whenever I had time to talk to those little boys on the phone or do whatever, then I made time for that. But if you're mature, if your parents allow it, I don't know. What, what's your mom saying about dating? Um, she lets me talk. She knows about <laughs> people that I talk to, people that I have messed with. She's gave me warnings about them before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she sees it come before I do. I give her that. But I agree with you whenever you're ready. Yeah. And it's just, we're, well, not we're. You're going to be in high school. Time is fleeting. Yes, relationships are fun, but they're not the world. They're not everything. Yeah. So don't be so obsessed with what's going on. Because I feel like a lot of drama happens. In relationships. Uh, yeah. yeah, so. Especially with friends and all that. You already yeah. know. I'm lucky. That was never my experience. I stayed away lucky. from drama. I didn't. I don't have much drama in my life. Yeah, but. so thank you, Jesus. Because we don't have <laughs> Half of these little boys are little oh. girls, cause it's not that important. Mm -mm. Not at all. So yeah, um, but yeah. So how are you able to tell when you need to let a relationship or friendship go when it starts to get bad? Yeah. Or what we call now toxic. Toxic, toxic relationships. Everybody loves that word, toxic. Toxic. Um, y'all see me pulling up my <laughs> thirty-six inches. Let me tell y'all, sure. it's a it's a chore. But um, I would say um. You know when something's going bad. And I would say that my mom, my family has instilled in me that I know the treatment that I deserve, whether that be from a boyfriend or that be from a friend. And once that person shows you those signs, those red flags, we all know the red flags. We just yes, choose we to ignore we act like them. We, don't see them. we ask God for a sign. He puts a sign in your face and y'all like, oh, I can't read. I don't know what that says. <laughs> you know the sign. You know you need to break up with that boy. You know you need to cut that friend off. So I think I've definitely takes practice. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can be like, oh, I like him so much, or but <laughs> <laughs> there's a time and a place. There's a time and a place, and you don't want to get into something too deep. We're getting used to being mistreated or talked know to a your certain worth, way. Definitely. Exactly, yeah. knowing your worth plays a huge role in um, choosing who gets to stay in your life. Because if someone is not putting a positive effect or contributing positivity into your life at the, especially at this age it's not worth it they're not paying your bills they're not buying if they clothes. don't want to see you succeed the same way you do just let them go let them go so that's my that's my advice on that part What does a revolution look like? Isn't it a difference in how we see things? Recognition that the old ways are not enough. That what has been done in education is not enough. That's why we sounded the call and the nation's top educators are answering. Together, we're creating a new program aimed at excellence in education. This is a revolution. This is Simmons Nation. Any tips or advice on walking into high school with confidence, blocking negativity, just because I know, I'm sure there will be a lot of it <laughs> as I walk in. Um, jealousy, negativity, any of that, any? Yeah, um, I would say walk in and not anticipate for that to happen. I would say be as positive, but don't be naive about it because, of course, things are going to garn Ugh. Jesus. <laughs> don't be na naive about it because things, of course, are going to happen. But I would say walk in with your head up, head high. I'm that girl. I'm here. Y'all cute, but I'm cute. Oh, that's all my blah. Exactly. <laughs> so, and people will say that's conceited. No, baby. No, it's just confidence. Having that high level of confidence is so not that cocky nobody at all. You, I'm that girl. I'm it. 
that's what you need because mm. there's gonna be people who will who will try to break but. you down, try to put stick their nose up at you. No, 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 no. I'm that girl. I know who I am, and no person can tell me. Tell yeah, me don't I let am. people try to change your minds about yeah. how you should dress or what you should look like because they do it. Yeah, so I think walking in <coughs> high school, confidence is key because people are gonna try you. They gonna try you, Casey. <laughs> and what you gonna do is say, I'm gonna call my big sis Ryan. Ryan. And, and y'all can talk to her. <laughs> y'all can talk to her. Don't mess with Casey. That's my little sis. That's all I gotta say. Um, but yeah, anybody who's watching this about to go into high school, middle school, college, whatever you're about to do, know who you are. Figure that out before you step into the school. Know who you are. Be grounded in that, and don't allow anybody else to tell you anything else about that. Doesn't make any sense. Um, what do I want to say? Know who you are. Don't let anybody. Okay. Just know who you are and be grounded in the fact that nobody can touch you. You are you and you are it. Period. <laughs> Point blank. So that kind of leads into our next question. What obstacles should we prepare for as, well, just for going into any new school, people that's younger than me, middle school, people my age going into high school. Mm -hmm. What obstacles should we prepare for mentally or physically if you have? Yeah, I would say, um, Depending upon like what middle school you came from or where whatever level of school you're going into, you may um, be brought into a world of academia that you're not used to. I know that when I came into Sacred Heart, um, my middle school is more more Montessori style. Yeah. So um, I was used to more discussion based curriculum mm -hmm. things like that. And so when I got to Sacred Heart, they put me in this room. There's just the slideshow and the notes. And I'm just supposed to write down the notes and then that's what we use to prepare for the test. And I wasn't really used to that. Mm -hmm. So I had to get acclimated to studying a particular way that would get me ready to get these good grades. So I would say prepare yourself for academics as first because that's number one when you're going to school because that's what we're there for. But um, just knowing that you may have to adjust your studying. So that means getting a tutor, um, meeting up with your friends, having a study group. Um, other obstacles, that's as in terms of like drama, it might happen. I would say that I'm like a weirdo because I didn't really have any drama in high school and you would think yeah. because I go to an all girls school, it was catty, catty, catty. But I think since I wasn't really like, you like I was- to yourself with the right Exactly, people. so like I was in the school community, like I had friends and everything, but I wasn't really like that involved in it. So I guess I just really wasn't in that circle to be involved in drama anyway mm -hmm. because I had my friends that I would see on the weekends. Like yeah. I had my best friend Mason, my friend Kendall, like that's who I would hang out with. The girls at school I see y'all in class, y'all cute or whatever, but I got my girls <laughs> I got my, that yeah. I see at church and everything. So just drama is just, ugh. but I think it just comes with being a teenager. Just knowing how to navigate that, it's not the, it's not the world, I promise you, it's not everything. And you're gonna look back in 10 years and be like, girl, that's what we was worried about. That's what we was mad about. So, yeah, it's not everything. So, switching topics once again, you know <laughs> how much I admire how beat your face is. Ah! So, don't tell me that. <laughs> don't tell me that. So, going into high school, I have started a makeup journey, I guess you could say. Period. Period. <laughs> so, did you wear like makeup? How did you keep it mature in your yeah. age? So, I said it before on the show, because I did like an episode where I did a makeup tutorial, mm -hmm. and I talked about my journey into makeup. And so, I only started doing makeup because I did cheerleading, and I needed to wear yes, makeup that's for competition. I started. Right. But I like fell in love with it, because it's so much fun. Like, And of course, when I started out my freshman year, I looked a mess. <laughs> we can pull up the pictures. Your girl was looking bad. She was, it was not cute. But with practice and everything, um, I definitely got better. Um, as for keeping... Me, ugh. As for keeping it mature, um, no I don't really know if it was mature because I was wearing pink, purple, blue, green. Well, you're uh, lying. <laughs> you're lying. <laughs> That's me. You're lying. So, I don't know if the word was necessarily mature, but just like appropriate, I guess. Um, Natural. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just up to you. Honey, if you, it's do what you want to do. <laughs> it's your face. Do, wear what you want. Who's, who cares? That's my thing. Who cares what, how, what type of makeup you do? It is what it is. So did you wear like on special occasions or yeah. like that's where you started Yeah, off? to this day like, except what's today? One day of the week? 
<laughs> if we were in church, <laughs> I would be wearing makeup like two days out of the week. So for school, I never did yeah. makeup for school. Um, I never, I'm bare faced most of the time. You see me, I don't really have any yeah. makeup. But for church, that's when I was stepping out. I would be my face for that Sunday service. <laughs> <laughs> and for the show, I'm so happy because I'm able to do makeup. And yeah. if I was going out somewhere, going to dinner with my friends, maybe going to a party, then yeah, but that's not happening right now. So <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty bare faced usually most yeah. of the time. So academically and physically, I guess you can say, what are some things that in high school that you learned that will follow you into college that you need to know? Yeah, um, this is gonna sound super nerdy, but learn how to take notes because- um, Heard that one a lot Yeah, recently. learn how to take your own notes because of course like a year, you're in high school, my freshman and sophomore year, my teachers gave us guided notes to follow along like on the project or the slideshows or whatever mm -hmm. but I'm happy that Sacred Heart kind of pushed me to have to create my own notes to study from because in college the teachers are just talking like talking talking yeah. talking they there may be a slideshow but they're not giving you any guided notes they're not telling you oh this is what you need to know you have to take that initiative to do the work and create your own notes so that you can understand that curriculum um what else Another thing is that not everything is a super big deal. Like, we always push how important grades are. Like, in high school, I would be stressed out, crying, oh my god, I have a B in biology. Or, yes. Honey, it's not that deep. I, 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 I promise you, of course you want to have all A's, who doesn't? Yeah. But it's not that deep. You're going to get into college, you're going to get your scholarships. If you have one B, you're going to survive. But that was, I'm talking to my younger self because I would be up all night crying, calling my granny, and my granny would be like, "Girl, calm down. <laughs> you are just fine. You're smart. Don't let don't let your grades dictate dictate who you think." Oh, okay, let me just break that because that's a good sentence. <laughs> don't let your grades um, or your GPA dictate who you how you see For yourself because sure. it's not a representation of who you are holistically. That's just how you're performing in school. So grades are not everything, y'all, I promise. Like, yes, try your best, but it's not the end of the world. Don't lose no sleep off the back of no grades. I promise you, it's not worth it. I had to learn that the hard way. Yes, <laughs> it's, not, it's not even worth it. <laughs> so um, I know in seventh grade, I had problems with finding the right crowd for me. I was finding crowds, and I would kind of find myself in drama or in the middle of a mix that I really didn't want to be in. So what are effects or things that we can avoid from being in a wrong crowd, if that makes sense? Yeah, um, listen to your mama or your granny. I can, your auntie, yes. Or your big sister. For sure. They that's, know, right? Like, they've been through blank. it. Like, they know, my mom always says, there's nothing new under the sun. Whatever she, whatever I'm going through, she's gone through it twice. She already knows. So when it comes to your friends or whatever relationships, Listen to whatever, whatever, whoever is in your life that has some wisdom because they know. And if you listen to them, they'll be able to guide you and help you find those friends. You may not want your mama to be picking up friends, but they're going to do a good job because they know you very well. Mm -hmm. So I would just say listen, listen to those people because they know. And that way you'll avoid being with the wrong crowd and getting involved in too much drama because don't nobody want that in their life. So uh -oh. I would just say listen to the ones older than you because they really know what's up. So you kind of touched on this in the question before last, but what are some things that you would tell your younger oh, self? So? Say this is the last question. This is the last question. What are some things that you would tell your younger self? You kind of touched on it in the question before last, but what are some things that... If I could tell 8th grade Ryan about <laughs> this, um, wash your face regularly. The pimple in your forehead are caused because you're so oily. You need to be <laughs> exfoliating and using some noxema to get up that oil. Um, another thing I would say is calm down. It's not that deep. It really like, and this goes for anything. I'm a, I'm a, I care about everything. Like little, every little thing, I'm overthinking about it. Just, it's not that deep, Ryan. The little boys is ugly. They're not cute. <laughs> they they stink. <laughs> They're not smart. You just <laughs> it's not worth it. So calm down about the little boys, and be nice to your brother because he's looking up to you. Show him love, even though he gets on your last nerve. And just be confident, girl, because you're gonna be so cute when you get older. Like <laughs> you're gonna be.
be so bad. I was like, just wait, girl, just wait. So thank you so much, Casey, for those questions. I had a lot of fun answering them. But before we get out of here, I want to get into my favorite segment, the You Go Girl segment. And for this week, I will be highlighting my good special friend. Her name is Audrey. We have been girls since, I don't even know, I think it's been like three, two, two or three years. She's been my good friend, but she is super talented. She is a class of 2020 graduate of Central High School and she now attends University of Kentucky, but she is the owner of Ethereal Stitches, which is a um, handmade crochet clothing brand. Um, you can find her on Instagram at ethereal.stitches, where you can go to her link and order some pieces, or you can DM her to make custom outfits. She makes like swimsuits, little cute two pieces, like the summer's coming up, hot girl summer is coming. So I need y'all to be ready with your outfits and get some clothes from my girl, Audrey. Um, Audrey, your work is beautiful and I am so proud of you. I love you so much. You go, girl. Film with someone else is just way better than being by yourself. But today, I have my home skill and biscuit, my ace, my good sis, my friend Kendall. Oh, that. <laughs> So we had so much fun talking today, yes, Casey. Did. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that I was able to answer your questions based on my experiences and give you all some insight just about high school and just what to look forward for look forward to in the future. Please make sure to share this with any girls that are in middle school or going into high school or whatever age, just to let them know you're not alone, the confusions or questions that you have, everyone else has them too, and that you have somebody that will answer them. Because I know if I were your age, I would want someone to yeah. have this conversation with too. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I am Ryan Jones with Ryan with an E, and I am logging out. Bye.